It was one year ago at the American Heart Association meeting 2012 when we first started to do some in-depth reporting on these, these new drugs, the PCSK9 inhibitors. Well, what's the latest? We're at the 13th meeting now, and I am with Michael Korn, MD, who is the chief medical officer of the Jacksonville Center for Clinical Research. A variety of papers have been reported here. We're, let's start off with the Osler study, which sounds interesting. What, uh, the, you've got over 1,000 patients now, and this is a phase two trial? Yes, it's technically a phase two trial because it took patients from the parent studies. There were four small phase two trials that were done, and the Osler study is an extension of those studies. Patients that finished those short-term phase two studies could then go into Osler, which was an open-label extension study. But importantly, it was a study that re-randomized patients. So it was actually a randomized controlled study nice. with standard of care being the control arm, and patients in the active arm were treated with evolocumab injections, 420 milligrams, Q4 weeks. Now this is a 52-week results from 1,104 patients. What did you find? The best way to sort of think about it is where patients started and where they ended up. So there were basically four groups. There were patients who were assigned to placebo during the short-term phase two studies who stayed on standard of care. And those patients had a 2% reduction in, in their LDL cholesterol after 52 weeks, despite the fact that physicians could actually titrate background therapies after 12 weeks into the study. Then there was the group that was assigned to placebo during phase two studies that was randomized to evolocumab. And those patients experienced a 52% reduction in LDL cholesterol on average after 52 weeks. The third group were patients who were randomized to evolocumab in the short-term studies at different doses, of course, in the phase two short-term studies, and then got on evolocumab 420 milligrams Q4 weeks in Osler. And those patients also experienced a 52% reduction in their LDL cholesterol after 52 weeks. And then finally, there was a group of, of patients who were on evolocumab during the short-term studies who were re-randomized to standard of care. And those patients saw that their LDL cholesterol has crept back up to their near baseline levels. At the end of 52 weeks, their average LDL reduction was 3%. But importantly, there was no rebound effect. So those patients didn't have an increase in their LDL above baseline values during the course of the study. Now, there are a variety of subfractions in cholesterol, and some of which we now know are probably more important than we thought in the past. What are the targets of these new drugs, these PCSK9 inhibitors? The, the primary target is LDL, and, and as we all are talking about here at the American Heart Association meeting, that's now becoming controversial. Exactly. In fact, we did an analysis looking at people hitting a 100 milligram per deciliter LDL target and a 70 milligram per deciliter LDL target, and we showed clearly that evolocumab helped people reach these targets compared to standard of care. There's no doubt about that. I still believe LDL is our target, and I think that the PCSK9 story is a very compelling story because we're lowering LDL using the same mechanism of stat that statins lower LDL. So to me, that's very, very exciting. That probably deserves a little bit more a comment, so if, if I can take a second to talk about that. Sure. So statins work by upregulating the LDL receptor. They make the LDL receptor work better. But statins also raise PCSK9 levels, which undermines this mechanism because PCSK9 is responsible for targeting LDL receptors for destruction. So a lot of people think that there are diminishing returns when you increase the dose of statins because of this mechanism. And the PCSK9 inhibitors interfere with that process. So basically, they, uh, they bind PCSK9, then PCSK9 is not able to interact with the LDL receptors, and in turn, those LDL receptors are supercharged. Right. And they're sucking LDL out of the circulation. So it's a really, really exciting mechanism. And again, to answer your question, I think that these, these new type of therapies will make a big difference in lowering LDL. Now, one of the studies also is taking a look at efficacy and tolerability of long-term treatment with AMG-145 in patients with statin intolerance. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Again, I was not the primary author in right. that, but it, I can answer very simply by saying evolocumab works in that population. And we don't have outcomes, particularly in that population, and that'll be very interesting over the course of time to see how the outcomes play out in that population. So how about just the efficacy and safety of long-term treatment in general? Efficacy is great. Effic efficacy is sustained. The, dr the uh, monoclonal antibody is, has a great safety profile. We're not seeing any 
type of adverse events. One of the concerns is injection, injection site reactions. Right. They occur infrequently. In the Osler study, only 5.2% of patients reported injection site reactions. They were very minor. There was only one patient out of 736 who stopped the therapy due to injection site reactions. So we're seeing great tolerability. We're seeing an excellent safety profile and really sustained, robust efficacy. Talk about the patient side of it for a moment. What is required of them? Uh, in the Osler study, patients came into the study sites and they received injections that were administered by the study sites every four weeks. Uh, as this evolves, we, will, we are developing self-injectors that patients will be able to use. That's being tested in phase three studies and I think uh, we'll find that they're actually pretty easy to use and well tolerated by patients. Well, for something like patient adherence to a, a regimen, this might be really valuable than a, a taking pills all the time if you have just once a month where you need to remember something. Interesting point. I, I've heard both sides of that argument. Uh, some people think that some folks have needle phobia. Uh, my personal experience is that the patients who have a compelling reason to take these medications, these treatments, are usually very happy to take the injections. But there's both sides of that equation. In terms of the 20,000 uh, foot view, where do you think this is going? What's next in terms of research? And uh, how long before we start seeing some phase three results? I think you'll probably see phase three results, beginning phase three results within the next six months is my prediction. Wow. Um, the big uh, question that's out there is, will these drugs be available in the marketplace before outcome studies are completed? There are outcome studies that are being enrolling, that are enrolling as we speak. Those outcome studies will probably require three or four years before we have answers. But the big question is, will these, drug, will these treatments become available prior to that? And I, my guess, and it's purely a guess, is that I think probably yes for the most severe patients. So for example, patients with familial hypercholesterolemia are a very, very interesting target to have access to these therapies before the outcome studies are completed. So uh, specifically, are you involved in some of the phase three? Trials? I am uh, very much involved with, with multiple companies, this I will be, disclose. This should be great fun. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to looking uh, at the results when it does come in. Try and remember the ACC meeting when you, uh, really exciting when you times. have data. Absolutely. Really exciting <laughs> times. For CardioSource World News, please check our coverage of the AHA meeting and, of course, our coverage of the PCSK9s, too. Uh, as I said, it's been one year since the, the first stories, and they just get more interesting as it goes along. For CardioSource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.